Good morning from Epcot as our vlogs here from Walt Disney World continue. It's another gorgeous day and we're looking forward to exploring this park, aren't we? Oh, I absolutely love Epcot because it's home to one of my favourite rides. It's Big Man! Hey, you've got the t-shirt on I today know, as well. I'm ready. <laughs> hey, there's so many other fantastic rides in this park. Of course, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind to get back on, the indoor spinning coaster. I absolutely love Guardians, so I can't wait to get back on it. Along with that, you've got Frozen down in World showcase and of course the whole of the showcase to explore which we absolutely love it's also quite a special day today because it's the first day that the original soaring over california returns to epcot and so we're looking forward to seeing that as well you've never seen that no i've never seen it before so i'm looking forward to it yeah and of course we'll get around explore the rest of the park get back on some of the classics as well such as test track and of course spaceship earth oh and there goes the monorail as we walk into this beautiful park that is still under construction. However, they have confirmed that finally the world celebration area, the middle hub of the park, will be completed by December this year. I was really hoping that we were going to come back to Walt Disney World this year and it will be finished in the middle, but sadly, not quite yet. However, we'll have a look at the construction that we can still see taking place. Not too far to go. They have also got Moana, Journey of Water, that opens next month on the 16th of October. Uh, and we was lucky enough to be invited down by a cast member for a special preview a few days ago. So make sure you check out that vlog if you haven't already seen it. And yeah, we thought the Journey of Water, inspired by Moana, uh, was a nice addition to the park. It took us by surprise, actually. Lovely fountain package over here, too. And yeah, even in the space of a year, loads more things have happened here, including the removal of them barges down on the World Showcase Lagoon. And uh, Epcot Forever, what was always deemed to be a temporary show, is back again temporarily as a placeholder before a new show comes in very soon. And of course, with it being one of Charlotte's favourite ever rides, we're starting off with Journey into Imagination with Figment over here today. Oh, I absolutely love Figment. It makes me so emotional because I love him so much. He's such a cute little purple dragon, isn't he? Such a naughty purple dragon. Oh, and the other day you actually had the chance to meet him as well. Oh my God, it was absolutely incredible. I loved every single <laughs> second of it. And we actually captured the moment on camera. We came down here really early for that. Uh, and I'm going to put in that footage for you all after we've had our ride on his attraction. Let's go. This is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. Yeah, I know all about the senses. They're sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. But you've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. A Disney classic that is, isn't it? Oh, I absolutely love that ride. If I could ride it all day, I would. Oh, I'm glad that you like it. And yeah, it's got all the electronics in there. It's got the old school Disney vibe about it, hasn't it? Oh, I just go around, I'm singing, I've just got a huge smile on my face. I love Figment so much. And now you can come off the ride and meet Figment. Here, yeah, you've got the meet and greet area just over there. Now, of course, it's only launched a few weeks ago. It has been getting very big queues, hasn't it? We Entry for the hotel, and we didn't wait long at all. So here's the footage of us meeting him. Woo! 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 Come on, everybody, on my hey. Hey. <laughs> oh, Oh, he was 
a really special moment, wasn't it, though? Oh, I absolutely love meeting Figment. Just before we came out, I burst into tears when I saw him. I remember you saying back in 2019 as well, how good would it be if you could come off the ride and meet him? And now you can come off and you can see him and you can meet him if you want to. What a special moment. Oh, fantastic. But yeah, get down here early because it gets very busy. Up next, we're going on to one of my favourites just here in Epcot. It is, of course, Spaceship Earth just here. I absolutely love this dark ride. It's very educational, but also it's beautiful as well with the great soundtracks. Yeah, let's go and ride on Spaceship Earth. <laughs> Recording our knowledge on KU1. There was only one small problem. When we moved, the recording knowledge stayed behind. <laughs> Enjoying our ride there on Spaceship Earth, we're still moving, but all the lights have come on, so we're getting a bit of a behind the scenes look at the attraction just there. Look at this! Oh wow! Hey, and there we are, the fact they took us at the start. <laughs> I really don't know why the lights have come on in here though, we're still moving, very strange. <laughs> So my ride footage there from Spaceship Earth. I adore that attraction. It's about 15 minutes in length and it tells you the story of how the world became what it is today, basically. And yeah, you're going through all these different scenes, fantastic use of animatronics and audio as well. Oh, it's great in there and I love going in there for the air conditioning. Hey, <laughs> yeah, and the ride system, very clever, kind of spiraling all the way up to the top and then of course brings you down backwards and you've got that nice little interactive element. Don't have a clue why the lights are on. I don't think the cast members did either. Everyone was telling them as we were coming off, uh, so I think they'll probably get that sorted now. I just now. didn't know what was going on. <laughs> we got a little behind the scenes look there at Spaceship, but uh, no, it's a brilliant ride, it really is. And it just looks the part here on the skyline at Epcot, doesn't it? Oh, it's beautiful, it really is. And yeah, an educational attraction as well. Of course, that's what Epcot used to be about when it first opened, and they still have got that element of education here in the park. And even the new Moana walkthrough um, does feature some nice educational moments too, which is fantastic. Look at that though, beautiful and it's gorgeous at night as well. We're gonna head round towards the land pavilion now. I always say this when we come here into the land, but it just feels a bit like a shopping center in here. <laughs> but yeah, here we go, time for Soaring. And yeah, it's the first day today that they've actually brought back the original film. Now, of course, Soaring debuted originally in Disney California Adventure in 2001, and it was that popular they brought it here to Epcot. And now, of course, other versions have opened around the world. Um, but yeah, they've actually brought it back to the original and it's the first day of it all to celebrate Disney 100 and you can see they've even changed the sign just here to put the Disney 100 off to the right so yeah we're going to go and uh, have a ride on Soarin yeah the original
there from our ride on Soaring over California. It feels weird saying that. Of course, it was Charlotte's first time experiencing that version of the attraction as well. I'm really not Soaring's biggest fan, but I did like the smells in there. The smells of oranges was lovely. I think because it was day one of it as well, the smells were amazing, all fully topped up. I uh, literally changed it overnight. And yeah, controversial, some may find, but I'm not really that big of a fan of the original. I know it's got a big fan base. I much prefer Soaring around the world. Of course, this is just Soaring over California. However, I just find the quality of the visual to not be as great. It's all the technology now from when it was filmed in 2001. Um, but you know what? It's nice to have it back for a limited run. Personally, I do prefer um, the newer version. A big part of that is not just taking you around the different countries, but also the transitions. I don't know if you noticed it the on that one. The transitions just really wasn't good in there. I was noticing it. It just went into it too fast. Yeah, it just kind of clipped straight there into it. Is. I prefer it when it fades or you get like a distraction on the screen and then it goes into something else. But it's nice to have it back for a limited run. Beautiful smells. Really good soundtrack, and yet yeah, soaring over California, a ruinous part of Disney 100 here at Epcot. And whilst we're here in this part of Epcot, we may as well do Living with the Land, the boat ride just over here. So yeah, we'll take you along. Very educational, this one. These elements, when combined with sunlight, create the diverse living systems of our planet. Why do these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun? Of all the forces at work on the land, humans have had one of the most profound effects. The need to produce food for a growing world. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee and rice, are well known around the world. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses and restaurants here at the land every year. A nice educational boat ride there through living with the land and yeah you go through the dark ride scenes at the stars and then of course head into the big conservatories as well which tells you about plants and how they utilize a lot of those here at Walt Disney World in the restaurants as well. Love the day again of course I do love Epcot and it's gonna be nice next time we come to not have all these construction walls yeah they're still working on that central area world celebration and like I said at the start sets be finished finally in December it's been under construction for like five years in fact Charlotte's never seen Epcot without construction walls never the construction walls have always <laughs> been up since your first visit in 2019 oh, crazy but yeah we're making our way now onto the seas with Nemo and Friends just over here 15 minute wait oh look at spaceship gorgeous now let's go make our way into our shell. I do like how you load this on the side. Makes it quite unique. Let's go and ride and see Nemo. Eyes open for all the way. Nemo! Here's a nice little Omni Mover Dark Ride. And along with that, some really clever use of projections as well. Now what's nice is at the end, it actually brings you out into the aquarium. And yeah, it's a huge aquarium to walk around. You've got all sorts to see. Around in here, loads of fish. Stingrays, the sharks. And yeah, I just like how with the ride, you know, you can see into these big tanks as well. 
Oh, look at the rays. Oh, somebody died in his room. Oh, there you go. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. You actually come upstairs when you come off the ride if you want to see all this bit. It's a pretty impressive aquarium. Back outside then now on this wonderful afternoon here in Epcot at Walt Disney World. I've always loved the look of this part though and I'm very excited to see it when all them construction walls come down. Also love the fountain package just over there too, really nice. Yeah, of course this all forms part of World Celebration and yeah, that central area that will be opening up in December. You can see they've kind of rebuilt all this building on the side. There's going to be a new character meet and greet area. Lots of green space, loads of new trees that have been planted. You've got these big kind of light towers that have gone up recently that look pretty cool. And of course, yeah, that old pathway will open up right through the middle just there. So you get easier access, Charlotte, down to Figment over there. Yes! <laughs> We're making our way over towards Mission Space, which we're going to be doing next. Of course, you've got the big creation shop just over there. And yeah, since we were last here, all these trees have been planted. And yeah, of course, back in the day with old school Epcot, this was like a big open area with hardly any shade. So all this greenery down here, it's going to be really nice. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And of course, Spaceship Earth down there at the back. But yeah, it's just going to be so nice to have all these walls gone. It really is. I've always loved the exterior for this attraction, Mission Space. It looks like it needs a bit of TLC though. Could do with the planet painted up just over there. We're going to make our way inside. Of course, you've got two different missions to choose from. You've got the less intense green mission and the more intense orange mission over here on this ride. But yeah, I do like it. It's a simulator. It can be quite intense. But yeah, the uh, orange one's only got a 10 minute. Green five, it doesn't really get massive weights, this. Even the green can be a bit too much spinning for some people. I think we'll go for the orange mission, don't you, Charlotte? Uh, you're normally all right, aren't you? Uh, hey, Space 220 restaurant over there. I tell you what, this facade needs some work, doesn't it? It's looking terrible. Yeah, look at that. It needs some big TLC. Really impressive queue line. Looks like it's practically walk on. We strongly encourage you to select green team, less intense training. Or proceed Everybody wants green, we'll take orange. Let's go. Pilot, commander, or engineer. The success of your mission will depend on all of you working together as a team. I'll be your Capcom, and in a few minutes I'll give you your specific assignments. But first, our flight director has some safety instructions for you. You will be responsible for first stage. Charlotte's going to be the pilot. And <laughs> Normally there's four positions, but there's only two of us, so we can pick what we want. When it's bedtime, I'll be the engineer. Let's go. You will also go. extend the wings for landing. Don't worry. When it's time to push the buttons, they will light up. Then I'll give you the go. Now, I don't know how we're going to get on here. We haven't got a commander or a navigator. Well, I'm the engineer. Charlotte over there. Here's the pilot. Ready for launch. Three, two, one. Works and then we're spinning round really fast. Of course, got our over the shoulder restraints. Oh, 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 oh. oh. So they always say with this keep your head face forwards. But if you do need them, there is sick bags in here as well. <laughs> no doubt, man. Pilot, engage second stage rocket. Now. I'm doing it. The rocket's done. Computer override engaged. Earth See you later, Earth. Next stop, Mars. If you do get a bit claustrophobic, it might not be for you, this one. Oh my god! Beautiful <laughs> sight, isn't it? <laughs> Something to dream about on the way to Mars. Engineer, I'll speak. activate hypersleep. Now. There we go. Activate any base This meteor storm is directly over your Mars landing site. Proximity alert. Hey! 
website. I've got to say, it's a fantastic overall experience. I love how hands-on it is as well. It really builds you up with all the pre-shows. And then, of course, when you sat there in your seat, you think, this is it, this is the moment. We're actually going on the X2 up to Mars. Oh, I feel sick after that, I do. <laughs> and I was doing three jobs because there was only the two of us in there. Oh, you did a good job, there <laughs> we go. I was like pressing over the buttons. I have to keep myself occupied in there, otherwise I just feel really, really sick. The good thing is, though, even though it is quite claustrophobic, you've got good air conditioning that's blasting out in there as well. And there is sick bags if you need them, but you didn't need those, I didn't did you? need them, but I'm glad that they are there. <laughs> just in case. But yeah, it's about a four minute ride as well, so it's quite a long time because you are looking at a screen you right are. in front of you. And you are quite closed in, especially with the over the shoulder restraint. Uh, but I love it. I think it's great how full on and yeah, just an overall experience um, that really is. It's unlike anything else out there. And up next, it's time for a ride on Test Track. And yeah, it was announced last week at D23, which of course is the big Disney Expo, that it's going to be reimagined for a third time. So yeah, really interested to see. They didn't reveal much other than a little bit of concept art, but it seems like they're going more back to the old world of motion style. So instead of it being very modern and futuristic, it seems like we're going to be seeing a lot more props and set pieces in here. And of course, they'd always take practical sets over screens. So as much as we don't know more in details yet, it is going to be closing and being reimagined uh, for a third time at some point in the near future. So yeah, we might get it again like this, or we might not. But so yeah, let's go and give it a ride. Always worth pointing out, the single rider's great on this. It moves really fast when it's busy. And of course, part of the current experience on Test Track is you design your vehicle that you're going to race, and then you compare it to all the other ones whilst you're going round, and when you run your actual car, going round on the attraction, the little screens around the side, and you can see how they compare in the race. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they keep this feature after the reimagining of this attraction. We'll begin with the capability test to see how your vehicle designs perform under challenging weather and service conditions. Monitoring road surface. Sim car performance data acquired. Commencing sim car off road and extreme weather sequence. Some more ride footage there from Test Track. It's quite hard to film that attraction with it being really dark in some of the scenes. Relies on a lot of lighting effects, but it is a really good fun ride that, isn't it? Oh, I really like Test Track, but I designed my vehicle and it didn't even show up. Oh, it is clear though that it needs some TLC and I am glad that they're going to be reimagining it again. I never got to experience the original version of it. It always looked much better in terms of a lot more props and scenery around. So I'm hoping that Test Track 3.0 is going to be an even better version of the attraction. 
Washington. I look forward to finding out more details. They didn't really set a time scale for it, uh, but yeah, I look forward to seeing what they do. Personally, I'm hoping for a lot more props, and maybe I thought this would be quite cool. You know, the outdoor section. I imagine doing like lots of domes and stuff over that. At least you wouldn't have to worry then if it was bad weather, it would be able to run through all of it. Yeah, because that's the thing. Sometimes when they had the lightning, I mean, it closes outside there. They covered it all over. I think it'd be really cool. We'll have some more dark ride scenes, uh, and I think that would look fantastic on there. I really do. But uh, we'll see what happens in the future. I'm sure they've got big plans for it, and we'll uh, find out soon. Anyway, coming up shortly, we've managed to get our virtual queue uh, for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. I absolutely love this ride. I can't wait to get back on it. Hey, we've got just under an hour to go. So we're going to do some re-rides. We're going to do Figment a couple of times. Yes! Make the most of that down here. We thought before we go and start Round World Showcase, we may as well wait for our time slots over on Guardians. And yeah, even though it's been open for ages now, you still need to make a virtual queue. Or of course, you can get a paid um, lightning lane for it. Uh, I do think by now, it should just be on the standby queue. But it is what it is. We've got it booked in. And uh, yeah, we're going to be riding that this afternoon. We had another great ride over there with wonderful figments and we now made our way over here to Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. It opened in May 2022 and yeah our boarding group has just been called. Can't believe it's been open for a year and a half and you still have to make a reservation oh, though. I can't believe that. I thought that would have been done by now. Come on Disney, let's get that standby open just so people can experience it as many times as they want to. It's a very high capacity roller coaster. Of course you start over in this building and make your way into a massive show building over at the back. A spinning roller coaster manufactured by Vacoma. And out the front just here as well, of course, you've got the huge Star Blaster, which makes a great photo opportunity. Let's go and experience Guardians. Fantastic indoor roller coaster. I do love this queue line. It is spectacular. It's huge scale. And there's so much to look at in here as well. Quite surprised that we're waiting this far back actually. When we've done it in the past on the virtual queue, we've not really waited that long. We were close to getting into the pre-shows. Yeah, a bit of a wait today. Which in a way kind of takes away from the whole virtual queue thing. I'd love to see them just open this standby now. There's a map of the planet of Zandar. It's waited 30 minutes so far. So we've ended up waiting one hour and five minutes and we're just about to enter the first pre-show and yeah that does include 20 minutes of downtime. Linking distant points in space. It is our desire to share this wondrous technology with your people so that together we might explore new worlds and create a brighter tomorrow. Welcome Epcot Terrence. I am Centurion Tau Merrick, and we're just about ready to teleport you up to the ship for the demonstration. Prepare the flinches and call the guardians. Now! There is no cause for alarm. Turn off that alarm. I've got an important transmission coming in. Hey, what's up, Novacore? Our cosmic generator has been stolen. What? Oh, I do love that effect there with the pre-show and of course all the walls lifting up revealing the screens in front of you. Very cool. Yeah, we're making our way now into the very heavily beamed station. Dual loading station as well for throughputs. Yeah, the theming in here is brilliant, it really is. Just the ambience. Thank <laughs> you. 
we have no room in our ship for these two guards. Drax, it's an honorary title. They're not coming with us. I see. It is meaningless. Well, then welcome to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, where's that thing, Well, we had our ride there on Cosmic Rewind, and you know what? It's a brilliant indoor roller coaster. It's such a long ride. The backwards launch is fantastic. And of course, what I love about the trains on there is they can actually turn. They don't really spin fast. It's more turning to face different scenes on there. I absolutely love that coaster. It is my favorite coaster at Walt Disney World. It is amazing. The backwards launch on there is definitely the highlight for me. And it actually feels surprisingly intense, around 60 miles an hour. And then along with that, there's quite a lot to look at as you go around, like all the planets, that you're looking to and of course all the stars around as well uh, it's very screen heavy on the coaster section i would like some more props to see however i do love the length of it it's such a long ride oh, isn't it, it just keeps on giving which is brilliant the pre-shows are also very impressive i think for a lot of the general public maybe the pre-shows are a bit too much um because you know it can take about 10 minutes to get through both pre-shows but i do like that and when the whole kind of room lifts up it's a very impressive effect and then of course you've got the music now of course i know it all relates to guardians of the galaxy and the music that they play on there for me though i do wish it had a theme soundtrack i know that i'm in the minority with that um, but for me yeah i'm not a huge fan of the whole dancing there on the right i know that's what makes it for a lot of people uh, but i'm in the minority with that one i have to say i completely disagree i absolutely love it we got conga this time so it's like come and do this <laughs> and he's like oh i love it i know it is the theme but also for me i just wish it had like a proper soundtrack on there too uh, but still it's a great ride everybody really enjoys it it's a long coaster love as well it. let's just talk a bit about that hey monorail uh, talk a bit about that virtual queue oh. You. obviously with us we waited over an hour because of downtime R really we waited 45 minutes if we're not including the downtime i still think on a virtual queue that's a tad too long really you expect to wait maybe 10 15 minutes yeah. not that long when you've already been in a virtual queue and it went down there was no announcement either yeah that's the thing you know you, you've waited in a virtual queue that's kind of the whole idea yes, of it yeah. they need to change the name if you're going to be waiting <laughs> like 45 minutes to just like book a place but uh, there we go we had our ride on there uh, it's always great getting on it yeah fantastic indoor coaster so it's come to the part of our day where we're about to enter my favourite part of Epcot and that is of course World Showcase. It features 11 different countries, lots of different restaurants, shows, attractions and you know what, it is so much fun walking around here and discovering the world. Oh it is beautiful here in World Showcase and here's a look across the lagoon and there's a new show that's going to be coming soon called Luminous, The Symphony of Us and that is the replacement of course to Harmonious. Yes then big barges that were still here last time we was in this park have now gone and yeah setup has started for Luminous. See I'm looking forward to that and that's the thing Harmonious you know was a great show to watch however um, it just didn't really have the heart you know that a lot of other Disney shows have got and also uh, what kind of sport it with the daytime view with these massive barges that isn't going to be the case um, with the new show as you can see um, it's going to be a much smaller kind of setup here on the lagoon and they'll be able to bring the barges out every day like they used to for illuminations but uh, in terms of for now we're back to the temporary fireworks show Epcot forever we have seen that before and uh, yeah looking forward to seeing that again tonight and then the new show is set to launch at some point in the near future and it's also the annual Epcot Food and Wine Festival at the moment as well. So you get lots of extra food booths all the way around World Showcase. And yeah, we're starting off here in Canada. Bit of construction going on here in Canada at the moment. And that's the thing, with the Disney parks being open 365 days a year, it's a big job to keep everything looking great. So yeah, Canada at the moment at the top there is having some refurbishment work done. Some great photo ops around here. Yeah, you can spend a whole day just walking around World Showcase. We're actually going to make our way now, of course, into our home country, the United Kingdom. Yay, I love that World Showcase. Oh, we're going to get some food down here, aren't we? We are indeed. Fish and chips. Oh, yeah, of course. Wouldn't be a visit to Epcot without a nice fish and chips from the Rose and Crown, which is just down here. You've got the indoor restaurants, or you can just grab it to go on the outside. And of course, you can sit down and enjoy the ambience of the showcase. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah, I do like coming during the Food and Wine Festival because there's a lot of extra options around here and it's just got a nice buzz around it. I mean, it's always nice around here, but when you come during this event, you've got so many extra booths and it's busy, it's got a great atmosphere and it's so nice just to see everybody having a good time. Oh, lovely. And here we are in the nice little English garden with our fish and chips down here. Twelve ninety nine for fish and chips. Yeah, not too bad really for in a theme park. And of course, got a nice cup of ice water there, free of charge. Ask for your water when you're ordering if you want to get some as well. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, that was absolutely delicious. Favorite meal of the trip right there. 
Yeah, we've got all the different shops to walk around now. You enjoy your fish? <laughs> yeah, let's have a look around the shops here in the UK. And of course, something else that makes it really authentic, World Showcase, is how you've actually got the cast members from those countries. Yeah, like here in the UK pavilion. Everyone's from the UK. What are you looking oh, at? A Terry's chocolate <laughs> orange. Just $10. Oh, there you go. Get that for two quid from our local B&M. Oh, no. <laughs> but that's the thing, you've also got all the different foods like chocolates and treats and lots of other items that you can find in all the different countries as you head round. <laughs> nice t-shirts with the London Underground on here as well, as we can see. We do love strolling around World Showcase. It's all the buildings, the fact the cast members are actually from those countries as well. And yeah, it's just amazing. Like, I love it around here. So nice. We're gonna make our way now round into France. Welcome to France. And yeah, we're gonna make our way onto another attraction now. And that is Ratatouille the Adventure that's located around here. Trackless Dart Ride, almost identical to the original at Walt Disney Studios at Disneyland Paris, apart from a few small differences that there is on this attraction. And you've also got Disney Skyliner just over there. That's not an attraction in the park, that's just outside. And of course that connects you over to Hollywood Studios and some of the resorts as well. And yeah, they've also got a second entrance here into Epcot, the only park out of all of them here at Walt Disney World to have a second gate and of course you can exit there you can walk to hollywood studios you can get the skyliner or you can get on one of the friendship boats as well oh the exterior looked gorgeous there didn't it the sun going down there we go got our 3d glasses let's go ride you see remy Ratatouille adventure. Did you enjoy that? I love that ride. The smell in the fridge is amazing. Brilliant addition as well here to Epcot. It really is. Absolutely love it. I got the chef's that one. Hey, it's nice that is. It is so heavy. This just keep doing the cooking with that on its own. It is so heavy. I think it's got like a light built into it. But oh, it's so heavy. I couldn't walk around with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the attraction is fantastic. Nice mix between the screens, the 3D, and of course some nice big props as well in oh, there. It's absolutely yeah, big fan of Ratatouille. I was overjoyed when they said that we're going to be bringing it here to Epcot. And yeah, I think it fits in really nice at this park. Sun's going down now, which is lovely. What's also great about World Showcase is there's so many like little streets and shops to explore. All the times I've been here, I still think I find parts that I've never seen before. 
And yeah, of course, each pavilion has got so many different shops, dining options, there's places to explore. Some of them, of course, have got films about the history of that country and locations to visit. It's just so pretty. Yeah, we're still here in France. And as we continue on around World Showcase, we're making our way now here into Morocco. Of course, you've got so many restaurants around here and a lot of them have got waterfront dining as well, which is fantastic. And yeah, the great thing about any nighttime spectacular they hold here in World Showcase is that you can watch it from anywhere all the way around, which is great. Love the vibes around here on an evening. You have a lot of live acts and performances around as well. Really busy, look at this. Food and wine really gets people out. Thank you, Oh, I'm looking across the lagoon just there. How stunning. Just spaceship earth look there. Gorgeous. And as we leave Morocco, we enter into Japan just here, one of my favorite pavilions, mainly because of this awesome view that's over here. And yeah, if you get the angle right, you can get a really nice shot with Space of Earth in the middle. Concert going on over in the American Adventure, just over there on the big stage. Yeah, this angle of Space of Earth, one of my favorites in the park. You line it up just about here. It's also a great place to watch the fireworks. Look at that. Going to have a look through one of the Japanese shops. <laughs> oh, who have we got over here? Oh, no, it's Tom Nook, the money grabber. <laughs> <laughs> From Animal Crossing. <laughs> and these shops are huge. That's the thing, you can soon walk around World Showcase if you just go around in a circle. But yeah, you want to kind of dive into the different areas. You never know what you're going to find around here. So many shops to look in. A lot of really unique items as well for each country. Yeah, it's massive in here. You can even get all the clothing in here too, which is fantastic. Fascinating, isn't it? Oh, it smells so good. Oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it, in World Showcase? Oh, I absolutely love it. Like, going into all the little shops is brilliant. And of course, all the lights are starting to come on now as well, so it's going to look gorgeous round here at night too. Live music is a big part of the Disney parks, and especially here in Epcot. Eat to the beat just over here. Yeah, they have all sorts of concerts going on here. I love how they're getting the crowd going. <laughs> around here in the American Adventure. Yeah, this is the halfway point. Making our way around World Showcase. Fantastic show, the American Adventure inside there that's worth watching. All about American history. Yeah, it's great to see. Would certainly recommend it. And you've also got the art shop around here as well and the statue of Figma. And I have bought this statue. I wanted this last year when we came and it was sold out everywhere. And I saw him and I was like, I've got to get this. Oh, and it was discounted as well compared to last year. Yeah, it was 99 last year. I think you paid, was it 60? Yeah, so I'm so happy with that. I absolutely love it. Oh yeah, we picked it up the other day when we were walking around. It's so nice. And as we leave the United States of America, we stroll around the corner here into Italy. It's all the music as well that really makes it around here. You really can travel the world, well, 11 countries anyway, in a day here at Epcot. <laughs> Enjoying yourself there. It's lovely around here. Continuing on with our walk, and we're here now in the home of the Bratwurst Sausage, Germany. We love Germany, one of our favourite countries to visit. I don't just mean here at Epcot. <laughs> you got the little miniature railway around here, which is really nice and pretty. See all the trains, all the little buildings.
And if you like a big German sausage, you can get one of those around here as well. Love all the buildings around here. It makes you feel like I'm back at my all-time favourite theme park, Europa Park, of course, in Germany. Oh, all these buildings. Fantastic. Yeah, you got a big beer keller at the back down there. Christmas shop. It is so nice. You normally get a good Black Forest Gatto around here as well. But they weren't in last year when we came, so let's go have a little look. A little quick service booth just around the corner. And if you've got a spare $79,000, you can get yourself this wonderful spaceship Earth just over here. Woo! Quite the price tag. <laughs> Look at that. And each of the 11 different pavilions has its own merchandise for each country as well, as you can see right here in Germany. Christmas in Germany. Beautiful. I don't think there's anywhere in the world that does Christmas like Germany. We've got three more countries left to have a walk through. And we've got China just here now. Beautiful. So I mentioned how a few of the pavilions have got different presentations. Here in China, you've got reflections of China in Circle Vision 360. And yeah, if you've never seen them before, they're definitely worth seeing. Have a little look in the shop just down here. See what goodies there is. There's another massive shop back here too. Really impressive to walk through. If you don't plan on buying anything, it's just nice to stroll through these, see all the theming and yeah, get a bit of an idea on all the different items. Nice bamboo hat there, Charlotte. Quite comfortable actually, it'll keep the sun off you as well. Yeah, you can wear that around Florida. You don't need to wear it just in China. There you go. 21.95 plus tax. That sky is stunning tonight, it really is. And yeah, we just walked through Norway for now because we're gonna be heading back there in just a moment. Ready for frozen ever after, but firstly, into Mexico. Another one of my favorite pavilions here in Mexico, with this big indoor area. And we've got the Grand Fiesta Tour starring the three Calabreos just down here. So we're gonna get on there now, boat ride. In my opinion, that's one of the most underappreciated rides in the whole of Walt Disney World. I think it's lovely. Some really nice scenes in there. And I love that with the fireworks up there and the sea then as well, how it's actual lights and not projections. You just wouldn't get that now if it was designed in this day and age. So I think it's fantastic, love that. Of course, we've had a really action-packed day here in Epcot and we're gonna end it with the fireworks. And just before that, we're gonna have a ride on Frozen Ever After just over here.
which is there from Frozen Ever After. It's a brilliant dark ride that, isn't it? Oh, what a lovely ride that is. My favourite scene is when Olaf walks across the snow. Oh, it's so good. And of course the animatronics in there with all the projections are fantastic. I like it when you go up into Elsa's Ice Palace and of course you are pushed uh, backwards at that point and down the drop, um, which is absolutely brilliant. But yeah, it's a great ride. I absolutely love it. And of course it's set to open soon at Hong Kong Disneyland. And in a couple of years time, it's going to open at Disneyland Paris as well. Anyway, we're going to make our way back outside then now, not long to go until Epcot Forever. We've not seen this show for a few years and it'll probably be the last time we see this one as well. But of course, like I say, this is a placeholder until the new show comes in. And we're actually going to watch it from around the other side, close to the American Adventure this time. Normally always watch the fireworks kind of as soon as you walk into World Showcase. I thought, let's freshen it up, watch, watch it from around on the other side. So we've got some highlights coming up over the next few minutes.
Some highlights there from Epcot forever. And yeah, we'll talk more about it in just a second. Just wanted to show you this angle of Spaceship Earth as we're walking down here. And there's even a Mickey Mouse going across just there too. How incredible does that look? The lighting that they've done here on Spaceship Earth, one of my favorite things they've ever done in this park. Words cannot describe how beautiful Spaceship Earth is. It is stunning, isn't it, Charlotte? The camera does not do this justice. It is absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, it actually does a show at night as well, which is incredible. Uh, but you know what? Epcot Forever, I really enjoyed seeing that there again tonight. Been a couple of years, of course, Harmonious has been in since. And yeah, you know what? I thought it was quite good seeing that. I think the show was really good, but I'm just not a massive fan of the audio, but the fireworks are absolutely fantastic in there. Well, I like the audio up until the finale. I think for me, you know, it's nice having all them kind of Epcot throwbacks. As much as I hadn't visited the park at that point when a lot of those attractions were here, I do like hearing the old music for Epcot. How amazing is this going on behind oh, I love us? That. But there's something so special about just seeing fireworks in Epcot. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing the new show. Worth pointing out that this version doesn't feature the kites with the pyro. Um, they're gone now. I think they were causing them some quite some issues. Uh, but still, it was really nice seeing that again, actually. And I enjoyed seeing them fireworks. And of course, look forward to seeing exactly what the new show is going to be like when it launches. In terms of our day at Epcot though, we've had a great time haven't we? Oh we have had such a good day, it's been so good to get back on Figment, my favourite ride. Oh of course along with that it was great to get back on Cosmic Rewind, oh, really enjoyed love that. Love that ride. Oh it was fantastic, we saw the original Soaring again which not seen for years so that was quite cool and of course lots of other classics here, Test Track, Spaceship Earth which was fantastic and yeah just generally a really nice day and then of course the second part, it always feels like two parts Epcot, <laughs> World Showcase, we love that don't oh, we? Oh World Showcase case is so good there's just so much going on in there yeah and just walking around it all taking it all in uh, it really is phenomenal but uh, of course if you haven't already make sure you check out our various other Walt Disney World vlogs here on theme park worldwide and that leaves us with one final thing to say get, get out, out there, there and keep, keep on, on riding. riding we'll see you in the next video